same cars with different brands? It's called badge engineering, which is an ironic term because there's no real engineering involved in this whole process. And there are two ways to do it. The first is to change the brand of a car you already produce for another within your corporate group to sell it in other markets. And the second is just going shopping. Telling another manufacturer to put your badge on a car they already produce to sell it in the markets you're interested in. And although there are agreements, many times the original manufacturers give too much to the second ones, or those who buy the cars to put their logo on them see their brand reputation affected because the quality of the products they receive doesn't correspond to the reputation of their brand. And these are 10 of the most interesting cases of badge engineering. Land Rover Discovery, Honda Crossroad, 90s. 4x4 vehicles and their derivatives, SUVs, were becoming popular, and Honda didn't have anything like this in its lineup. The goal was to have an off-road vehicle that could compete with the Mitsubishi Pajero, or Montero, and the Toyota Land Cruiser Prado. For the brand, it represented a quite high and uncertain investment, so they opted for the easy way out, buying the Land Rover Discovery and rebranding it as the Honda Crossroad. It was sold in Japan and New Zealand, but it didn't have good sales. In Japan, it was very expensive due to fees on imported goods, and in New Zealand, it was cheaper to buy the Discovery, which in the long run was the same car. Additionally, Land Rover's durability was far from Honda's standards. Everything would come to an end when BMW bought Land Rover in 1998, and in 1999, the brand launched one of the success stories in the automotive industry the Honda CR-V. Toyota Yaris, Scion, IA. Toyota needed a subcompact car to complement its range of economical and youthful cars in North America, and taking advantage of being a minority shareholder of Mazda, it decided to use the newly launched fourth-generation Mazda 2 for this purpose. The plan was to use the same Mazda 2 in sedan and hatchback body styles, with slight aesthetic changes at the front end, to sell them as the Scion IA in the United States and as the Toyota Yaris in Canada and Mexico. After the dissolution of the Scion brand in 2016, the car would be called Toyota Yaris in the United States until 2019, and by 2021 in Canada, only the hatchback version would be sold, and in Mexico, only the sedan version. Toyota IQ, Aston Martin Signet. Another interesting case in the industry. Aston Martin needed to reduce the average emissions of all cars it sold in Europe due to a change in anti-pollution regulations. They came up with the brilliant idea of asking Toyota to produce an IQ with some changes to the exterior and interior that would justify paying three times more for the same car. While the IQ cost 14,000 euros, the Signet cost over 43,000. Aston miscalculated the demand, and from an estimated 2,000 units, they only managed to sell 786. Subaru Impreza on Saab 9-2X This car was only possible because GM owned Saab and had a significant stake in Fuji Heavy Industries, which in turn owned Subaru. The 9-2X was a Subaru WRX with a five-door hatchback body and was sold only in the United States, where it was thought to refresh the brand. The car was produced for two years and sold just over 10,000 units, but it failed to save the brand, which would eventually disappear in 2016. Mitsubishi 3000 GT Dodge Stealth The Mitsubishi 3000 GT was a grand tourer with an impressive technological arsenal for its time, deserving of its own video. However, what many people don't know is that in the United States, the same car could be bought as the Dodge Stealth, albeit with vaguely differentiated exterior lines. The interior, mechanics, and technology were the same. Unfortunately, sales were not as expected, leading to the discontinuation of the Stealth in 1996, while the 3000 GT would be produced until the year 2000, accumulating just over 150,000 units between both models. Daewoo Kalos. This shows what GM was like before the 2008 bankruptcy. Conceived as the Daewoo Kalos, it was an average car that GM would sell worldwide. In America, Southeast Asia, and the Middle East, it was sold as the Chevrolet Avio, 
or as the Pontiac G3. It was also sold as the Holden Barina in Australia and New Zealand, as the Ravan Nexia in Uzbekistan for the countries of the former Soviet Union, and as the Suzuki Swift Plus in Canada. Daewoo Winstrom Max Australians bought it as the Holden Captiva, the British as the Vauxhall Antara, in continental Europe as the Opel Antara, in Canada and the United States as the Saturn View, the Koreans as the Daewoo Winstrom Max, in the Middle East as the GMC Terrain, and the rest of the world as the Chevrolet Captiva or Captiva Sport. It was exactly the same car with few aesthetic modifications, which was produced in three locations, Mexico, South Korea, and Russia. Suzuki Cultus The first Cultus, launched in 1983, was sold under various brands, all owned by GM. However, the second-generation model of this car, sold as two-door and four-door sedans, or three-door and five-door hatchbacks, took things to another level. Produced in 11 different locations, including Canada, Indonesia, and Venezuela, just Suzuki sold it under six different names worldwide. But it was also sold as the Maruti Suzuki 1000 in India, as the Chang'an Suzuki Lingyang in China, as the Chevrolet Sprint and Pontiac Firefly in Canada, as the Chevrolet Swift and Forza in Latin America, as the GEO Metro in the United States, as the Holden Barina in Australia, and as the Subaru Justy in Europe. Production of this model would end in Pakistan in 2016 with the Suzuki Margala. But before talking about the top three, let me mention some honorable mentions. The Kia Elan, originally the Lotus Elan. The Opel Speedster, a roadster that was also sold as the Lotus Elise, Vauxhall VX220, and as the Daewoo Speedster. The 1997 Daewoo Lanos, which was sold as the FSO Lanos, Zaz Lanos, or Don Investa The 1988 Suzuki Vitara, which was also sold as the Chevrolet Tracker, Chevrolet Vitara, GEO Tracker, Mazda Proceed Levante, and as the Santana 300. The Australian Holden Monaro from 2006, also sold as the Vauxhall Monaro, Chevrolet Lumina Coupe, and as the Pontiac GTO in the United States. Now let's continue with Daewoo Matas. No doubt the purchase that GM made the most of was Daewoo Motors, and the evidence of this was the first-generation Spark, as it was sold under eight brands and at least ten different names worldwide. Daewoo Matis in Korea, Europe, and Latin America. Chevrolet Spark in Asia, and also in Latin America after the Daewoo brand was discontinued. UZ Daewoo Matis in Uzbekistan. Ravan Matis in Russia. Formosa Matis in Taiwan. FSO Matis in Poland. Pontiac Matis and Pontiac G2 in Mexico and parts of the Arab world, Chevrolet Lecce and Baojun Lecce in China, and Chevrolet Exclusive and Chevrolet Joy in Pakistan. Isuzu Trooper Another one from General Motors on the list. After the American company acquired 32% of Isuzu's shares, it began a long commercial relationship where the Japanese company would produce cars that GM could sell under other brands, such as the LUV pickup truck. But the case of the second-generation Isuzu Trooper is unique. More luxurious and refined than the first generation, it came to fill several gaps that GM had in the global SUV lineup as the boom of this type of vehicle began. Apart from being sold in Japan as the Isuzu Trooper, it would be marketed as the Chevrolet Trooper in the United States and Canada as the Opel Monterey in continental Europe, as the Vauxhall Monterey in the United Kingdom, and in Australia as the Holden Jackaroo, Holden Monterey, and as the HSV Jackaroo. But it didn't stop there. To capitalize on the SUV boom, Honda repeated what it did with the Land Rover Discovery, selling it as the Acura SLX in the United States and as the Honda Horizon in Japan. GMT car. GM did it again, and they did it so many times that we must refer to the platform that was used in 13 different models. Yes, 13 models. The setting was the first oil crisis. Due to the sharp price shock, the drop in demand for large sedans and the rise of Japanese cars, General Motors used its multinational power to design a simple and economical automobile 
that with small changes could be adapted and produced anywhere in the world. And they were successful, because it was a car that with three bodies, sedan, hatchback, and coupe, was sold under 13 brands and up to 20 different names. We won't delve into all of them, but here are some. Holden Gemini in Australia and New Zealand, Opel Cadet in Germany, Isuzu iMark in Japan, Vauxhall Chevette in the United Kingdom, and as the Chevrolet Chevette in the United States, Canada, Colombia, and Venezuela. But this car would also be sold under some brands you've probably never heard of, such as Condor and Imisa in Ecuador, San Remo also in Venezuela, Saihan in Korea, or Grumet in Uruguay. The T-Series continued to be built until 2008, a commercial life of 34 years, and it's the car that proves that GM before the 2008 bankruptcy was truly the king of badge engineering. And that's it for the video. Which car did we leave out of the list? Leave it in the comments below. If you enjoyed the content and want to see more like it, subscribe to the channel. And if you're still undecided, we've left two videos for you to watch more interesting content like this one. Goodbye.